Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. I wanted to do a bit of a side video here for the Dyson Sphere program. So I've been playing it on my channel for a little bit now. You know, obviously I'm not an expert as you see from my videos, but you know, I feel I'm playing it pretty well from my perspective and I'm playing it the way I want to play it. It's not the way some people do where they, you know, go to all great lengths of meticulously counting everything out and creating massive things, you know. I just play it the way I feel bit of randomness to it, a bit of just make it up as you go um, and I just find that exciting but anyway that's not the point of this video. The point of this video was um, I just wanted to provide uh, some thoughts from my head of how the game could be improved or things that could be done and hopefully the developers see this video and think about some of these ideas. Now a lot of these ideas are just random thoughts in my head, okay, so I do not expect the developers to, to incorporate all or half of these ideas, right? They're just random ideas from things that I've played in the past and things that I think could work with this video. So, you know, I'm just saying some of these are pretty extreme ideas. Some of them are minor tweaks, which would be really great to add, and some are massive big things that, uh, you know, I'd be very surprised if they were implemented. And even if they were, I wouldn't expect them all to be implemented. They'd be like, you know, one of them, if anything. But we'll go through it and I'll just throw my ideas out there and, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments about my ideas. What are your ideas for if you've played the game and you have improvements and things like that and ideas you want added to the game? Let me know in the comments as well. You can have a chat about it and, um, Hopefully the developers can see this sort of stuff and can uh, grow the game for the future, for the final release, whatever they want to do. And, you know, updates, DLCs later down the track. Happy for all of that stuff to keep the game going. So um, let's start with the list now. Okay, so one thing that you may have noticed when I play the games is the flight system sometimes frustrates me uh, just a tiny bit. Okay, not flying around the planet, all right? That's fine, I have no problem with that. That's pretty easy. As soon as you get into space, I find it very hard to control uh, your, your guy, your robot, whatever you want to call him. And when you start using the warpers too, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. So again, if I am, let me know in the comments. But I find that there's no locking system, right? You can pin uh, a direction type thing, but it doesn't lock anything. So what I would like personally is some sort of like autopilot type mode where you can just tag onto a planet or a star system and say, go there. And you know, you hit the warper and bang, it just goes there. I don't have to steer it. I don't have to do anything. It just gets there and it gets there efficiently and doesn't get off skewed off the side, which is what's happening to me all the time. Now, again, like I said, it could be something I'm doing wrong. So let me know if I am, but if not, please implement something like that, developers. The other small fix that I feel I mentioned a hell of a lot in my videos is some sort of labeling system or pinning system where I look at my planet, I look around and I find a spot I want to go to. I want to put a pin at. So then when I get back to my normal view, I can get up in the air, fly, and I can see the pin. I know where to go. Whereas at the moment, I find where I want to go. I've got to guess where that was. I've got to sort of estimate, okay, by the spin and by the how fast it moved when I drop out of planet view to normal view, where could that have been? So a pin system. On top of that, like I said, some sort of labeling system, right, would be really handy. There's so much stuff on your planet. It's very hard to find things. You're constantly looking and looking and looking. Now, I don't know how you would implement this pin, the labeling system. I don't know what would be the most efficient because a lot of the time I'm building lots of stuff in certain areas, right, in the same spots. So it might be very hard to label all that sort of stuff. But you know, even if you could label a, a certain area with a group of components, you know, just to say, you know, it could be a custom label. It doesn't have to be the label of the item, but a custom label that say, this is all my parts, this is all my bits, this is all my belts, whatever it is. You know, just something to make it easier to find. Because I find, and sometimes I try to cut, a lot of the time I cut it out of my videos, but sometimes I can be looking for something on my planet for five to 10 minutes. 
before I even find the damn thing. And it just sometimes drives me insane. All right, so one other thing that would obviously be handy, and I think a few people have talked about this on YouTube, would be some sort of blueprint system. Now, I was in two minds about this, right? Because to me, I don't really necessarily want to grab other people's blueprints and just go, oh, well, I can just build the entire universe now. There we go, you know, five minutes, I've just plonked down all these blueprints and there's my universe. But, you know, it does get a bit tedious sometimes when you're building the same things over and over again. You know, something like, where I constantly go to a new planet and I put down solar panels all around the equator, you know, things like that. So what would be really handy, I think, would be, you know, maybe there's a sandpit mode where you can grab other people's blueprints, but maybe in the main story mode, you can build your own blueprints and you have to build them as part of the game. So every time you start a new game, you start without any. Right, so you have to build your blueprints again as you go because you are a new, say, robot, new colony, whatever you are. Something like that, you know, because I feel that as you develop in your world or universe, you should have blueprints. But what I'm saying is they don't necessarily have to be blueprints that can be taken to a new game so that you can just express, run the whole game. You know, it should be that they're just part of that game. You know, it's, it's sort of a similar thing to me, like say Planet Zoo, where they have the research items and those research items, are you unlock them and then they're available to you in your zoos. But if you started a new game and totally new campaign or whatever like that, you don't have that research, right? You haven't done it yet. So you have to do it again. That to me would be how I would sort of like to see the blueprints done because I still think it's, a necessary thing to build these things yourself, right? And learn the process of building them and go through that hardship of building them. But at some point in time, you don't want to continuously build the same things over and over again because it gets very, very boring that way. So being able to create your own blueprints from stuff you've previously built would be really handy. Now, the other thing I'd like to see, and this is one of those sort of extreme things, would be some different game modes, right? The way I see the game at the moment is um, one sort of game mode. It's not technically sand pit mode, but you know, it is sort of like that. I mean, I guess if I was to say anything about this is when I first started playing this game, I had a real sense of feeling that this had a story. You know, there was a directive. There's, you've got to build the Dyson Sphere. It's got to be for humanity's sake, right? They need to have this Dyson Sphere. Now, unless I'm missing something, it's like that story or that feeling of a story just disappeared. It then just became, the guy only comes on to tell you when you researched a new item. Now, I thought there was gonna be a progression story and it was going to lead to something and you were going to save humanity or you were gonna do something epic. I'm missing that and I wish that was there. Now, on top of that, as I said, I would like to see various different game modes. This would be something that could give the longevity to the game, right? Because how many people are gonna go through everything that we've done in these videos? Just building, 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 building to get to build the Dyson Sphere and then wanna start again. What incentive do you have to start again other than you just like doing that so you are gonna start again? So some ideas are things like having some environmental issues, right? At the moment, you play the game, there's no environmental impacts, okay? So having certain limitations or things like that, or natural disasters, right? A, a massive fire, an earthquake, uh, a tornado, uh, whatever, storms, floods, whatever, all that sort of stuff, volcanoes going off. Various things like that. And you know, obviously these ideas come from other games like Civ 6 and all that sort of stuff, but they're good ideas, right? And if you're talking about worlds and planets and you know, we're going to lava planets. Never does anything get destroyed by lava, you know? And these sort of things could change the game. Like, you know, what I'm saying is that I think the way it is now should be a game mode because people may want this. They don't want natural disasters. But maybe another game mode is to incorporate natural disasters. So then you have to keep going back to planets. You have to keep repairing stuff. Things break. Oh God, I've got to fix this now. This is broken. The whole thing, my whole system's collapsed because of a natural disaster. It's the real world. You know, if we're pretending it's the real world, that's what happens. 
You know, some other ideas that could be incorporated in the gameplay is, you know, you've got, like I said, standard mode, you might have natural disasters, you might have greater difficulties. You may have a system where you are limited to one planet, that's it. All you get is one planet, nothing else. Whatever's on that planet is what you get. Um, my one star system, right? You only get one star system. Whatever's in that star system, that's what you get, that's what you work with. You might have things like, uh, you can't concrete the planet. You have to work around the nature of the planet, right? You know, because I see lots of YouTubers just build foundations and just boom, cover the entire planet in concrete. And all the water's gone, everything's gone, the hills, the trees, the whole lot, the rocks, everything's gone, build everything everywhere. Maybe you set a limitation that says you can't do that. You have to build around the the natural elements of the planets. You might have a system where you develop something to do with war. So we've now got enemies, we've got other civilizations, uh, aliens, all that sort of stuff. There's some ideas. You could also, to go in line with difficulty, you could make uh, their limitations on resources, right? So the more difficult you set the game, the more limited your resources are, the quicker they run out, the, the harder they are to get or things like that. You could, you know, if you wanted to have, say, a blueprint system, but you also wanted to force players to, to uh, have to recreate those blueprints every time you play through, maybe what you do is you have random recipes, okay? So each of these elements are not built the same by every person for every time. So if you want to build um, a chemical plant, maybe in one playthrough, you need these elements to make it. In another playthrough, you need these other elements to play to, to make it. And that way, your blueprints do not just work all the time. You have to adapt and change things. So there are a few ideas that I have anyway, just some ideas there of improvements, uh, you know, longevity, that sort of stuff. As I said, a lot of these are pie in the sky stuff. A lot of these things are taken from other games. I'm not a game developer, okay? I'm just a person that plays games there a lot of them are going to be very hard to implement and I do not have any idea what their vision is for this game going forward other than what they've already done in the early release that I'm playing. I'm enjoying the game. Um, I would like to play it for a long time but I do have reservations of how long I could play it before I find it getting a bit too tedious and worn through. I mean obviously I haven't finished it at the moment so I've got a bit to go but I have seen other YouTubers finish it and I have seen those YouTubers stop playing because they just don't have anything to draw them back to do it again or continue on. There's just nothing to continue on. And, you know, I would like to see this game continue on. You know, you've got games like Civ 6 and that that just keep, or Civilization, not 6 itself, but Civilization just keeps going. It keeps adapting, keeps adding keeps doing things you know there's lots of those sort of games and I would love this game to be one of those to keep progressing forward in that and not just stop you know get to a point and just stop so hopefully you know we'll get some of that stuff and uh, we'll create the longevity that we want out of these games but you just never know you know they might not want to do that it may be just a quick here's what you get and play through whatever you like and if you don't want to play anymore that's fine we're fine with that but um there's some of my ideas anyway let me know what your thoughts are your ideas disagree with anything i say agree with it let me know in the comments i'll have to have a chat about it as i said hopefully the developers see this video it's probably unlikely but hopefully they do and um you know they think about some of these ideas that we have and read your comments as well so Thank you for watching this if you did get to the end and I will catch you in the next video.